Um, so, August 24th. The water level has slowly been dropping behind the Great Wall. Now we can see the bottom of the stream. I crowded on the bank with the others, looking for gold. When I saw specks at first, I thought I had found it. Then I realized they were moving around. We'd trapped some fish. The cook stepped down from the bank in high boots. With his bare hands, he began to snatch the fish and dump them into a basket. I guess we're going to have fresh fish tonight. As I watched the silvery shapes fall one by one into the basket, I thought back to the time when Uncle had first marched out of Tiger Rock. I'd expected him to scoop up the gold just as easily. That seems decades ago, when I didn't know anything. August 27th, so three days later. It's taken three days for the water level to drop. Uncle and I have begun building rockers. The fox, fox sketched diagrams on a piece of scrap wood for us. Rockers are boxes a couple of meters long and about a meter wide and about a quarter of a meter deep. There is a slight slope to the bottom across which cleats have been nailed. One end of the box is open and a screen box at the other end, a little above the bottom of the box. The screen box is smaller with holes through the bottom. The whole thing rests on curved boards, so it will rock back and forth. I guess that's how the machine got its name. August 28th. My first gold. I slept only a few hours last night. Most of the camp was down by the river, waiting for the morning. When I reached the bank, I strained my eyes looking for the gold. It must be in small pieces or even dust. All I could see was the sun glistening on the mud. In dozens of places, I saw fish flopping about. Fish again tonight. The fox himself was first to jump down with a shovel. Instantly, he sunk ankle deep in the wet mud and gravel. When he didn't dig right away, Prosperity shouted, What are you waiting for? The gold isn't going to jump into your pockets. The fox just sniffed the air. No, not yet. To tell the truth, all I could smell was the mud. Some of it really stank. The fox is the fox, though. He high-stepped through the mud and wet gravel until he was in the middle of the area behind the Great Wall. It was there his nose told him to dig. Then he high-stepped back to the bank, where a rocker stood. He dumped the test shovel into the screen box. Didn't look like anything to me. Then he dumped a bucket of water over it. The dirty water traveled down the angled bottom and gushed out the open end. I didn't see any melon-sized nuggets lying on the screen box. All I saw were small rocks and bits of gravel. I felt disappointed. However, the fox ran a finger along one of the wooden cleats, and he announced to everyone that this is what they had all come for. He held up a gleaming fingertip. Gleaming is like sparkling. A gleaming fingertip. The little flecks on it gleamed like stars. I don't think I have ever seen anything as pretty. I think I finally understand how gold can sink its claws into someone. I'll have to be careful not to go crazy too. Everyone let out a whoop and a roar. The sun reflected off the wet riverbed, so it shone as if it, were, if it were all gold. Suddenly, it seemed like all our worries would evaporate, like the mist rising from the mud. So as the sun came up, they could see the sun shining on the little bits of gold all over the mud. August 29th. No break again this Sunday. The fox says we're in a race with the winter rains and snow. After that first shovelful, there hasn't been any gold. I remember when I was coming up here, I hoped I would get to see the snow on the mountains. However, we stopped below the snow line. I'm still curious about seeing it, but where's the gold? August 30th, still no gold. August 31st, will we ever find any more gold? All that work, all that sweat, can it be for nothing? September 1st. Nothing but disappointment. The fox has decided that the rest of the gold must be deeper. We will have to strip away the upper levels of gravel and mud. We have begun to haul it away. September 5th. Though it's Sunday, there's no rest. I feel so tired. After that first glimpse of gold, nothing. It's as if the land were teasing us. We dig and dump, dig and dump. 
September 9th. The Americans are celebrating Admission Day. It's the day that California officially became a province two years ago. He calls it a province because that's what they say in China, but that's when it became a state, it was September 9th, two years ago. The fox says, that's why there's so little government here. Normally it takes longer for a territory to become a province. America was so eager to claim the gold that they made California a province right away. Even though there were only a few government people to handle the rush of all those people seeking gold. Lots of guns going off. It sounds like a battle. They must be celebrating like they did on July 4th. We've minded our own business and stayed in camp working. We're down half a meter. Still no sign of gold. We hear the Americans haven't found gold at their dam either. Can uncle be jinxing everything? Or maybe it's me. September 14th. Gold! We had to go down a whole meter. All the rockers sway from side to side as we separate the gold dust from the dirt. So far, the robbers have not come back. Perhaps the fox's plan is working. He has neither guns nor knives, only his wits. And yet he keeps winning. As scary as this place is, I trust him to get us through the dangers. September 18th. We have begun to eat better. A wagon comes to us with fresh supplies from Chinatown now. We even get to eat with fancy chopsticks coated in black lacquer. That's kind of like a shiny covering the paint. September 21st. I feel like part of a machine. We scoop up the river bottom, dump it into a rocker, add water, and get the gold. Every night, I still can't rest. There are letters to write, and I have to help the fox, too. We dry that day's gold by a pot-bellied stove. Then we weigh it and enter the number into the ledger. A ledger's like a notebook. Some we put through a strong box. Most of it, though, we put away in the chamber pot. Strange, but the gold is always gone from the chamber pot the next night. It's like a beast that can never get full. More of Fox's magic. So I'll read about one more page, and then we'll go on. The fox stayed in his tent all day fussing. He kept calling for more wood, but never allowed anyone inside. He must have the chills because it's not that cold. September 27th. The three robbers came today. They took what was in the strong box. The fox wasn't acting when he protested. The robbers just laughed. Then they went through the camp, taking what they wanted. When they searched the kitchen tent, I was surprised at how many cases of lacquered chopsticks there were. I guess the fox really likes them. I hate the fact that these robbers can come into my home and take anything they want, but there's nothing I could do about it. I remember what the fox said. The family comes first. I won't do them any good if I get myself killed, but I'm still so mad inside, I hurt. The sooner I get back to China, the better. We have laws there. Robbers go to jail. So I'm gonna stop there. So there's a little mystery going on. Why are there so many chopsticks and where's the gold keep disappearing every night? 